Let's get the federal government's response now. The inquiry's final report makes calls for sweeping legislative changes to national policing. Will the feds follow those recommendations? Public Safety Minister Marco Mendicino is here. Hi, Minister. Good to have you on our program this evening. Thank you for making the time. Thank you. I heard both you and the Prime Minister say that you will, quote, take the time to properly digest and understand the recommendations before deciding which ones to implement. And I wanted to ask you to put, if you could, a finer point on that for Nova Scotians who have already spent three years examining basically what went wrong uh, in, in around port pic How much more time do you need before you decide uh, what you're going to do about it? Well, uh, first, I want to say that this is a very difficult day. As you pointed out, uh, the families have been grieving now for almost three years. And that's why it was so important that I was here, that the Prime Minister was here to receive the final report from the Mass Casualty Commission. They touch on a number of important recommendations regarding the police response, the relationship between police, communities, and other levels of government. Uh, I understand that uh, your question is about how quickly we can move forward. I would say to you that uh, we understand the urgency with which we need to undertake this work to make those uh, recommendations um, a reality so that the changes that are necessary to reform the RCMP and law enforcement uh, generally uh, will restore the trust between the RCMP here in Nova Scotia and also ensure that a tragedy like this never occurs again. Uh, what can Nova Scotians listening gather from that? For example, you know, is there a commitment from your government to have a, you know, a decision on which recommendations it will implement by the end of the year. And I'm not asking to, you to give me you know, X, Y, Z particular date, but, but I think for people who have watched this unfold, listened to the testimony, the evidence has been laid bare about what went wrong and the failings of the RCMP. Those details are well in public view and in the view of you and the Prime Minister too. So what necessitates an extra long time to respond and, and can you please on behalf of those Nova Scotians, put a finer point on it. Well, you're quite right that, that as a result of the Mass Casualty Commission, there has been a lot of transparency in what occurred and the work that does need to be done with regards to uh, police reporting protocols, training, a leadership structure, uh, some of the ways in which the government on the elected side communicates uh, with uh, law enforcement in the time of a national crisis or a mass casualty tragedy like the one that we saw here in Nova Scotia. And so we are going to move forward urgently. You heard Commissioner Duhuam uh, say earlier today uh, that he fully accepts responsibility, that he's committed to making those changes, that he will be publishing progress on the implementation of those recommendations going forward. But I also just want to say in conclusion to your question, Vashi, that in parallel to this, we have already begun making some of the important reforms to the RCMP, and that has been communicated by me in my capacity as Minister of Public Safety to the RCMP. We need to do a full core press, and we will do that. You have started some of them, but I think it's important to note that the Commission itself noted more than two years after the event, RCMP leadership had done very little to systematically evaluate its critical incident response to the deadliest mass shooting in Canada's history. Why hadn't your government forced them to do more earlier? Well, my job is to hold the RCMP accountable, and you're right, there is more work that needs to be done when it comes to uh, ensuring that we're making the changes that are necessary around uh, alerting, around notification. Uh, and we have started to see some changes on that front. For example, in James Smith Cree Nation, there was more leveraging of social media to quickly alert the public about the potential uh, risk to community safety. Uh, but um, we have to do far more about, uh, about advancing that work, and that is uh, precisely why it was important that Commissioner Duhem uh, come out, make those acknowledgements, accept responsibility, move forward with the recommendations, and we will continue to hold the RCMP accountable so that those changes are made. I mean, you point to James Smith Cree Nation, and yes, there, there certainly was better communication, but there was a lot of concern from people who live there in, in and around in those communities about the response, the speed of the response. So I, I'm not sure that that example, you know, underscores that the changes that need to be undertaken have been undertaken. Minister, when you uh, listen to and look through the details through which the RCMP, it's evident, failed in, in, in 2020, do you agree with the overall assessment of the commission that the force does need to be overhauled? I agree that there were significant challenges, or to use the exact words of Commissioner McDonald, that there were significant shortcomings in the police response. 
And that is why it is essential that we now look at those recommendations that touch on police protocols, that touch on uh, the way in which we train incoming Mounties uh, to make sure that the tools are in place, uh, especially in rural communities where, um, you know, there are uh, vast geographic uh, distances that need to be covered in response so that we can prevent this kind of thing uh, from occurring again. You also heard the Commission Commission uh, members say today that we also have to take a look at prevention. And that is something that the government is also committed to doing and in fact have begun uh, to do to invest in the capacity of grassroots organizations to address mental health challenges, to make sure that we're providing support to vulnerable members so that we can stop this kind of uh, crime and tragedy from occurring again. And, and, and I appreciate those points, but, but they don't necessarily speak to the, the question I asked with respect, Minister. And, and I'll put aside the specific recommendations. I know that you just got it. You, ha you need time to review it. Put those aside for a second. I'm asking you as someone who is intimately familiar with the shortcomings that you just agreed as the Commission laid them out of the RCMP in this incident. If you believe, after watching that unfold, listening to the testimony, hearing from the the, the family members of the victims, as the person who oversees this force and holds them accountable, if you believe that it deserves or needs an overhaul, the force in and of itself cannot persist in its current form and needs to be significantly overhauled. Well, indeed, that is uh, precisely one of the reasons why uh, we are making the changes that are necessary to the RCMP. Um, whether it's through the creation of a new Public Complaints Review Commission to strengthen oversight and transparency in the way in which they carry out their conduct, whether it's uh, through the contractual service agreements that we have with provinces and territories. And I did have a chance to discuss with uh, Premier Houston the need to look at those recommendations together, uh, whether it's with regards to the constitution of the membership of the force, making sure that we diversify it. Uh, I assure you, Vashi, uh, that we are full core press on those efforts. And today is a very harsh reminder that there's still a long way to go. So uh, in my capacity as Minister of Public Safety and as the federal government, uh, we will continue to hold the RCMP accountable for making those changes so that we can prevent a tragedy uh, like this from ever occurring again. Uh, again, Minister, I ask you with respect, though. I, I was looking back through other reports that have been conducted, some under previous, uh, uh, previous governments, but one in 2020 under yours, another one in 2017 under yours as well, that called for very specific reforms. Even the very specific recommendation that is made today, that you have an external review, that you conduct an external review of the operations of the RCMP and of the relationship between the government and the RCMP. That was recommended very specifically in 2020, clearly under your mandate. What, it didn't get followed through on. You can't commit even at this juncture, three years later, after this report, after everything that's come out to do the same, you'll examine the possibility. Can you understand how Canadians will be listening today and are skeptical of your government's ability and or the RCMP's ability to make good on all the promises that you're making? Of course I understand uh, those concerns, Vashi. I understand uh, why those questions are, are being put in. They're entirely appropriate. My, my point to you is uh, take a look at the steps that we are taking to strengthen uh, the external oversight and review of the RCMP, and that is uh, proof of our commitment uh, through, for example, Bill C-20 uh, to make uh, good on the reforms that are necessary. That doesn't mean that we don't have an obligation to take this final report from the Mass Casualty Commission and further accelerate it. And our commitment is to make sure that we accelerate that work, particularly around um, the oversight that is necessary. It is a standard that we see set across uh, the country with various other levels of law enforcement. Uh, we need to continue to work on that with the RCMP, and you heard Commissioner Duhame uh, make that commitment as well. But you won't even say today that you're willing to conduct a review that was originally recommended back in 2020. You said at first that you would, another reporter asked you, are you sure you would, and you walked it back. No, uh, in fact, what you've heard me say is that we are going to raise the bar and have already begun to do that when it comes to the external overview of the RCMP through the Management Advisory Board, through the creation of the Public Complaints Review Commission that is crystallized in Bill C-20. That's what I'm saying to you, Vashi, is, and it speaks directly to your question. It is responsive to it, that we are putting in place the mechanisms that are necessary to hold the RCMP to account in making the changes that are necessary. We owe it to the families to do that work, and we are going to. Minister, I'm out of time. I'll leave it there. I appreciate your time, as always. Thank you so much. Thank you, Vashi.